and speed comes uh, came handy to me in this scenario because uh, there are topical distribution of the q bank initially and also there is uh, there are a lot of grand risks the ini ct pattern as well as the neat ss pattern so i focused on the ini ct pattern the et question format pattern and I kept redoing those tests daily i bring in all the wishes and greetings on behalf of all the faculty members of speed medical institute to dr prasad ajay chanaiwar for scoring aml rank 1 cml rank 1 in mch neurosurgery in ini ss november 2025 session congratulations to you doctor thank you very much sir so great to have you uh, can you tell us uh, uh, your brief background history from where you started till date what all yeah. based yes sir uh, i started my mbbs uh, in grand government medical college mumbai in 2015 okay. i completed it by 2021 uh, that was the covid area uh, that time i took one drop year and uh, i prepared for my neat pg at that time the securing in 2022 i went i got my neat pg rank and i secured ms general surgery at my same institute at ms uh, at grand government medical college i'm completing my ms general surgery from the same institute only excellent and, uh, and after that i planned for neurosurgery that is why i applied for the inict uh, exam fantastic to do ug and pg in the same place is like your yeah. home yes yeah, sir <laughs> almost eight, nine years yes yeah, sir it's eight nine years now yeah it feels so. like home now <laughs> great now can you tell us why neurosurgery is your passion neurosurgery as a passion actually uh, uh it's a very uh, i don't know how many will agree with this but this is something which i feel the strongest memories have the strongest colors and my strongest memory of the ot is the brightest or the darkest green which i ever saw was in the neurosurgery ot the reddest of the red was in the neurosurgery ot and that was the ultimate kick i ever got like i stood in a lot of ot's exploratory laparotomy even seen a whipples a lot of cases i have seen but the uh, the kick you get by standing surely standing in that ot that was something very different uh, i still remember uh, completing uh, that ot at 3 am the ot got finished at 3 am it was a subdural hematoma evacuation by dr sagar patil sir at our uh, at our jj hospitals i had attended that surgery and after the attending that surgery i still woke up at 7 am to go to their rounds and i felt that okay if i can do this if i can if i'm liking this then maybe this might be the road i want to go on that, that is uh, how i uh, because that that is how i always felt that uh, if i want to do something that i should get a feeling every time i enter the ot like this <laughs> so it, that that is the feeling which i get like that feeling so i in chase of that feeling i think this the journey has brought me here fantastic so that's how i mean i think it works with the passion and the style <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> so good so that's the same thing i had for cardiothoracic also so the same, feel. <laughs> the same kind of a feel the maximum kick and adrenaline picks up when we do something which you really are passionate of doing it yeah and it it was not even that i was operating it was just that i was seeing that thing no, and, and uh, even if yeah even if i am getting that that much amount of uh, thrill by just looking at it yeah there were a lot of things i saw the residents there they were like prasad do you really want to go join neurosurgery do you see us uh, you see us working day and night here you see us sleeping any time like i have seen that kind of scenario but i said sir this is something i'm enjoying right now so let that feeling stay shubham now can you tell us once you decided to do neurosurgery then what you did yes. what was your strategy to get rank number 1 yes sir so my initial plan for the set of examinations was uh, to get through this examination because uh, we got relieved a bit late thoda sa late we got relieved in our institute uh still had enough time to prepare because uh, i am belong belonging from maharashtra here the university exams are still going on uh so i had my university exam also coming up and also my inicd coming up for me so my target was to get a decent uh, clearing in this examination whether it be a qualifying whether it be anything which i can get i just wanted to get through all the material which i had in my hand for neurosurgery to study it completely to give out the maximum which i can give in this attempt and then if i cannot get through this attempt then maybe the six months down line or a attempt aane wala then one another attempt is coming six months down line that is that is what that was my thought when i entered uh, this when i started studying for the exam eventually after i started studying for the exam i realized that the target is achievable we can achieve it seven days down the line after i finished my notes and everything 
I completed my notes by then. So I thought that this is probably achievable. I just need to solve all MCQs. I need to give tests, multiple tests, review my weak areas. And if I keep continuing, if I keep continuing doing that, then probably I'll get a decent rank this time. So I just followed down that path. I did not alter it anymore. Great. Now, who introduced Speed to you, and what was your experience in preparing with Speed? Ah, uh, my my experience with preparing with Speed was uh, I had already prepared my notes. Sir. So my main uh, my main concern, even during my PG preparation and even during this preparation, was giving tests, the number of tests I wanted to, give, and the reviewing them again and again. And Speed comes uh, came handy to me in this scenario because uh, there are topic wise distribution of the Q bank initially. And also, there is uh, there are a lot of grand tests, the INI CT pattern as well as the NEET SS pattern. So I focused on the INI CT pattern, the AT question format pattern, and I kept redoing those tests daily. I used to give a grand test daily. I would give it in the morning. After I'm done with my grand test, I would review that grand test. I would mark those topics uh, which I am failing at, and uh, and I would and go back to my notes. That is how I did my revision because I did not have enough time to revise the notes completely. I could not revise. Could not do continuous cycles of revisions of notes, so I did a staggered pattern. I used to do my uh, I I knew there are certain topics in neurosurgery which I knew that I was confident on that. I may I won't get ninety percent of the time I won't get them wrong, but there were some topics which I was still confused on. I knew that I could not clear those topics just by reading the notes because I had read the notes and I still could not get those topics. So question and doing solving the questions was the only way out of it. So I kept solving, I kept solving, and eventually. Slowly, I got the confusion out of my head on how to approach those questions. <laughs> so the language of exam is MCQ. You have been thoroughly working on the MCQs. You knew it. This way, we need to strike, and whatever I want to learn, I learn and hit on MCQs. Yeah, that that was that 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 was my entire approach because I knew I cannot and neurosurgery being a big topic, I cannot complete it. And neither I can complete Greenberg nor I can complete Human. So the only best scenario is the notes I have available in my hand and the MCQs which I have in my hand, and Since the time was less, so I went retrograde. I went from MCQs to the topics which I was confused on. So, what was the duration of your preparation? Uh, my duration of preparation was one and a half months. Or oh, one and a half months was the yeah. entire journey. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite inspiring. So, I mean, it's a full time preparation. I mean, I mean, it's all yeah. in yeah. almost. Huh? Yes, sir. It, it was. It, it is a full time preparation. Really. Like I got relieved. I started studying in the morning. Jitta time milta tha, whatever time I could utilize, I did that. So, I mean, what kind of videos you saw? I mean, uh, uh, I majorly saw solution videos. Uh, any T N D discussion part, uh, any question answer discussion part. That that kind of videos I used to see, and I knew that I I actually had very less time to prepare. So I had in I had in the back of my mind. that i cannot uh, see a lot of uh, videos and i cannot approach multiple platforms for videos because it would eventually waste my time and it reduce my uh, the uh, what i can say the potency of my revision okay it won't be as as efficient my revisions won't be as efficient if i keep continuing tracking different different sources asking uh, seeing the same same videos i see brain abscess in one video i see another brain abscess in another video it just Keeps taking time. Rather than that, I'll, I'll solve questions on brain abscess for half an hour and clear my doubts on brain abscess completely. That okay. that was my entire approach. So your primary focus was to solve as many MCQs as possible, as many yeah. MCQs as possible. Whatever the knowledge and resource required, go back if required to see the notes or the videos. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Now, how many questions did you attend, doctor? I attempted eighty questions. Sir. <laughs> I think you are clear on everything. I mean, clear on your preparation, clear on uh, the solving MCQs, clear on number of attempts. Super. Yes, sir. Actually, I start when I give. I was when I was giving GTs. Uh, it was I made a point that I give one GT every day. Sometimes it would be two GTs because it is easier. Like, there are only eighty questions, and eighty questions have four options, and you get the time to revise them all in a four, four and a four to five hours of period. You can re- uh, cover the review the entire GTs. So you can give one GT per day. You can review it in four to five hours. And uh, what I saw was uh, the num. Uh, there was a certain part of questions which I used to mark uh, that I know definitely the answer of these questions. There were a set of questions which I knew that I was confused upon. I knew how to eliminate two options. So I used to always keep a count of those questions where I was confused in two options. 
and i would still go ahead by marking those questions whether to see whether i am right or wrong based on the knowledge i had and eventually i realized that i am better at ticking off those elimination things so i i decided that if the if it comes to show the push comes to show in the exam i'll attempt 80 questions fantastic i mean can i ask you this question i mean where are you aiming yes. for rank one uh, no no not not at all uh, my primary aim was to just clear this examination because i told sir i never had this in mind initially uh, only after 7 to 10 days of my preparation starting my preparation that i thought that yes we can achieve a decent cet in this ini cet examination if we keep continuing doing this gts if i keep focusing on my notes i knew that one i would definitely get one decent cet if keep keep putting giving this effort so after giving the exam did you feel that you will get rank one uh no not at all because i saw the paper it was too easy after that paper i came, walked out and i was thinking that the margin for error is very less in this paper because the paper was genuinely easy i felt a lot of my colleagues and my friends even thought that the paper was very easy uh, at, at least the neurosurgery part it was easy they could have gone much higher but uh, after walking out that paper i realized that it might not be the same this year i thought that this not this might this year i might not make it because the error margin is was very less so the giving a real exam and the gt when we are giving both I mean how yeah. did you, i mean it was easier than the gt or tougher than the gt or it's like another gt uh it was just like another gt that, that 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 is the exact aim i was going for throughout my preparation that the exam should feel just like another gt that is why i wrote, give a gt name great now uh, can you share something on the paper what did they focus on this paper more uh they focus Uh, more on the basic aspects they basic wanted to see whether i know the basic basic aspects. basic aspects of neurosurgery whether the whether the person appearing for the exam knows the basic concepts of the neurosurgery they did not go for very high end things they did not go for very high end things there might be some four five questions in the exam which were looking at high end things for example there was one bionic arm question there was this stimatosensory evoke potential questions i remember they did have those kind of questions but general pro forma for the exam was to see whether the surgeon can approach the neurosurgery aspect the same goes applies for the general surgery part of the uh, exam as well they they were trying to see whether we know what the general approach or the basic approach to the patient should be great now interview part how did you prepare how did you prepare what you uh, had an experience in your interview what did they ask you sir in my uh in my interview part they asked uh, the basic questions they, they asked me to introduce myself the institute cited my mbbs and ms from and they started off uh, the first interview question was as i clearly remember because i could not answer it there was this question on triphasic response after removal of a craniopharyngeoma i knew that craniopharyngeoma causes diabetes insipidus but bit at that time the knowledge left me and i ended up answering sids like i was thinking okay let it go but the interviewers were very friendly they said that if you don't know the answer just say i don't know and we'll skip to another question <laughs> so that went that, that was very good for me i just said sorry sir i don't know and they skipped to another question which i answered then afterwards because the the questions were then pretty simple because they asked me ventricular to, ventricular ostomy access points uh, then they asked uh, i believe uh, pri- primary and secondary glioblastoma uh, predilection in the lobes as well as the mutations which may occur in them so it was basic stuff which they asked afterwards very good now after you finish your interview still you felt that you have a place in uh, top most rank in uh, in ess no 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 I, I, so i told now after walking of that exam I, uh, i i was very discouraged because i had made some silly mistakes in that exam i came out of that exam hall i was thinking how could i make those mistakes but uh, and i was really anxious at that after time the interview. no no after not later after the theory part only after the theory part only when i walked off i thought that this exam might not have been that well because that uh, the question I like I said the questions were easy they were approach based so I thought that the margin for error would be very less. So the results came then it was rank 1 what happened after that? Uh, I cannot <laughs> tell sir I cannot describe the feeling sir. No I cannot really cannot describe the feeling. Uh, I was very happy I called up my parents I told them that this is uh, uh, I got my rank and I might uh, get I know in the neurosurgery branch work which I wanted from early early days. So they were also very happy. the uh, other uh, other uh, other than that i cannot describe great wonderful I mean uh, at times in life I mean yeah once in a lifetime 
it's a yeah. great feel probably that could have done yes, that and yes, you know we have planned to take uh, an institute how did you have decided or it to decide i want to take nimans uh, uh nimans institute very good so it's a great journey and your achievement you, of a euro surgery with a style i mean what is that one advice you or you want to give or a message you want to give for juniors who are aspiring for you know surgery stick to one source of notes and so and keep solving gts the gts will point out the deficits because eventually what happens if you don't give mcq don't solve mcqs what happens is you keep cycling back to the notes and you may tend to skip the parts of the notes there is there is a active revision there is a passive revision passive revision involves just flipping of the pages that okay target done abscess done this is done that should not be the key here that active revision should take part here there is there will be some parts of the note that you definitely know there will be some parts of the note that where you are confused and confusions can be only brought out on when you solve questions that is when the confusion becomes very clear yes i am confused in this topic so i believe giving uh, gts and mcqs will clear that confusion out because there are a lot of teachers to help in this scenario um when when is the time there is test and discussion as well the test and discussion part helps because uh, this is where the teacher tells you how they have approached to this question and it brings clarity of thought to you that okay this is how i i should have approached this question great now time to thank and whom all you want to thank that they helped you to reach where you are today um uh, i would like to thank thank my parents my uh, my friends at grand goran medical college my colleagues and my faculty at grand goran medical college especially dr girish bakhti sir dr ajay mandarwal sir for guiding me throughout this journey great so once again we wish you on behalf of speed team uh, all thank the you best, very much sir all the success for a great and a wonderful career and mch neurosurgery as a neurosurgeon you're going to help millions wish you best all thank the best thank you very much sir Thank you.